Okay, thank you very much. We're on to the last session now. <clears throat> um, and I'd like to introduce uh, Gavin Dudney, who's uh, our penultimate speaker. Uh, what can I say about Gavin? <laughs> Gavin is Director of Term Technology at the Consultancy, where he works in teacher training and consultancy connected to educational technologies. When we chose the speakers for this uh, session this, um, uh, this, this afternoon, we were trying to get a mixture of past, present, and future. Um, and um, we've had plenty of uh, nostalgic memories and lessons learned and so on. But um, uh, I'm sure we're going to continue in that vein with Gavin. But strictly speaking, Gavin is the face of the future. So I'd like to introduce Gavin. IH Technology and Me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's great to feel like new boy again. It's fantastic. Um, it's a bit of a big ask, this kind of event. It's, um, it's been great sitting here watching everyone else. And um, thank you to Simon and everyone at, here at IH and to the technical people. Thank you to everyone who's watching online. It's a really, really great pleasure to be here. Um, my story goes back to 1989. I have to tell you a little bit, actually, before I tell my story, I'm at that unfortunate age where my memory's going, but I've not yet reached the age where it comes back and you can remember every breakfast you've ever had in your life. So I may be a little bit liberal with the odd date or name at some point, but I'm hoping people will forgive me. So... Um, in 1989, I found myself living in London um, with a, a degree in French and Spanish, but working like so many of my contemporaries and so many of the people who are watching online probably and here in the room, working as a database technician and uh, graphic designer and advertising executive for a gay telephone dating agency <laughs> during the day and um, had as a stand-up comedian at night. Um, when I realized that my parents weren't exactly happy with my career choices since they supported me through university. So I thought, what could I possibly do? Um, and I decided, like so many of my contemporaries, that I would become an English teacher. So um, off I went to International House, Piccadilly. Fantastic building. If, um, lots of you will remember it. Of course, some of you won't. Um, there are lots of apocryphal stories about that building. Before I came, people used to swing on the chandeliers and things, apparently. But none of that ever happened while I was there. But instead, I did a four-week course along with a, a motley crew of people. I spent a lot of time underground, I remember, um, in the bar or in the computer room, because, yes, there was a computer room. And um, the only thing I can remember about the computer room is it had a game. It was a kind of a graphical uh, text-based adventure game, which I, I believe was called something like Get Out of London or Escape from London. Um, and it basically involved students on their last day before they went back to their countries, and they had to uh, wander around London and perform tasks. So they had to go and buy presents for their family and that kind of thing. And in doing so, they would interact with people and make choices about the kind of sentences that they would utter. Um, and I suppose that was my first real uh, introduction to technology and teaching. Now, I was trained by a young upstart called uh, Peter Moore, who some of you may know. And he'd just come back from Spain at the time, and it was him, really, who is largely responsible for my career, such as it is. Um, and he sent me off to Spain. And uh, in, the, in the last week of my four-week course, uh, I went for an interview in a hotel somewhere in London, and I was offered a job in Spain. And uh, I finished the course on the Friday, and on the Monday, I started teaching 25 hours a week, um, as you do, <laughs> because you're feeling so very confident at that moment. <laughs> And having spent four weeks with a multilingual group of adults, it was only natural, I think, that I should be given seven groups of nine-year-olds um, for my first teaching experience. So I wandered happily into the school on the first day. It was a small school outside Barcelona, just round the corner from an international house. But I couldn't get a job at an international house because in 1989, 73% of the world's teachers wanted a job in Barcelona. And it was only the really uh, experienced and qualified who could get jobs at places like International House. So I worked in a small school. And my first day, I wandered in to be met by a, let's say, a, a, a mature man in the library where I was checking out the resources. 
And he said, hmm, he said to me, funny thing about M, he said, is I thought it should always go after N in the dictionary because, well, it's so much longer, isn't it? <laughs> Which was my first introduction to the other stuff. But it was, it, was a, it was a wonderfully supportive school, and I spent six very, very happy years there, and I learned my trade, um, a trade that I'd had a good basis in during my four-week course, but there's nothing quite like getting into the classroom. My first class of nine-year-olds, I went in, and the room was in darkness, and the kids were all asleep on their desks. So I duly sat down at my desk and went to sleep. And ten minutes later, they were all begging me for a grammar class. And that was pretty much the approach I adopted for the rest of my teaching career in that school. But I learned, I learned lots of things. I learned to appreciate the creativity of people. I learned to work with people and to try to understand them. What does he mean when he says Mr. Jones is in the bathroom shaving his bear? <laughs> or Mr. Smith was very annoying with the wound on his head. There's a picture of him rubbing it on people. And later, with higher levels, I always remember getting a job application letter from a first certificate student that finished with the immortal phrase, I have ease to have intercourse with people. Moreover, I have my own car. <laughs> I await your wire brush response. And I had actually got very good at using the dictionary by then to pick those things up. I could do, I like languages, overcoat Spanish. I could do that one. I could do, the journey was long but very chest of drawers. I knew what that meant. But I never figured out the wire brush response. So no one else did. So I did. I spent my six years there learning my trade. Um, and I was uh, responsible for setting up a self-access center there. Um, I bought my first computer. It cost me almost £3,000. I got a free holiday, a weekend's holiday in Mallorca, for buying the computer. And it was delivered by three men. Huge not the, not the men, the computer. Huge. And um, the first thing I did was delete the operating system from my computer. And that was when I, that was when I knew I was destined to have a career in technology, really. <laughs> um, and so I duly read the 500-page manual and the other 500-page manual. And that's really where my experience comes from. But in um, 1995, let me just fast forward a little bit. In 1995, I had already had some experience in uh, setting up a self-access center. I used to make little diskettes. Some of you will remember diskettes for people to take home. They had practice exercises on. Uh, and in 1995, I got my first connection to the Internet, a very slow connection, which cost the equivalent of £25 an hour at the time. But I was immediately very excited about the, the possibilities of the Internet. Um, it was a whole new world. It was a very slow world, 9.8 kilobytes a second in those days. And uh, so I duly signed up to do my first conference talk at a very small conference in the city where I lived outside Barcelona. Um, and I, I suppose I was met by bemused stares by 90% of the people um, saying that'll never take off, which of course we now know to be true. And 10% uh, of people who were very, very excited. And two of those people happened to be Jonathan Dykes, um, and the other one's gone completely out of my head. Anyway, there were two people, <laughs> Jonathan Dykes and the other one, Jenny Johnson, who you will all know. Um, and there they were, sitting in the front, and I could see Jonathan, because you can actually see inside Jonathan's head if you know him. I could see these things moving inside his head as he made calculations about whether this was going to be an exciting thing or not. And about a week later, two very odd things happened. The first one was I got a fax. <laughs> we all remember faxes, right? I got a fax from a man called Scott Thornbury saying, I have to write a book with someone who lives in Australia, and I've heard about this internet thing. Can you come along and bring me one? <laughs> so, so I went round to his house, and I fitted a modem in his old Mac, and he duly provided me with a, a very grand lunch and a, and a nice bottle of wine. And... Um, the rest, with Scott, of course, is history. I, I'm largely, I taught him everything he knows, of course, and <laughs> largely responsible for his career. But um, he's still stolidly refusing to pay me the 1% royalty that I asked for on all his methodology books. The second thing that happened was that Jonathan Dykes phoned me up and said, would you like to come and work at International House Barcelona? I'm setting up an internet classroom, and um, I'd like someone to come and run it. 
So um, I immediately jumped at the chance, of course, and I, I went off to work in IH Barcelona, um, where I spent quite some time setting up the internet classroom, working with teachers, um, and going to conferences. I think, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm being a bit liberal with the dates here. A uh, lot of travel. I did a lot of travel for International House at the time. Uh, I remember going to uh, Hisife in northeastern Brazil, where I worked for a week and then was taken driving up the beach for a week. And this seemed to me like a, a positive career move. Uh, also International House Sydney uh, and many other places. Um, encountering always the legendary International House hospitality uh, and care and support. Um, and, and it really is true that the organization is reflected all, all the way around the world like that. Um, it's been a great privilege to work in many of those places. Um, 1997, I believe, and it may be 96, saw me uh, going to my first um, conference, director's conference, which was in Lisbon, um, where I met, well, I was the only person who did a talk using PowerPoint at that conference. And afterwards, people came up to me and said how brilliant it had been. How brilliant my talk had been. And I said, oh, which bit did you like? And they went, I can't actually remember the content, but it looks so beautiful. Could you show me that again? I mean, it was at that point that I met a very dear friend of mine, Roger Hunt, who I'm sure some of you know, um, who's now at International House Barcelona. And Roger and I got on like a house on fire. And um, we went off for dinner to talk about uh, technology and other things. And uh, when we got back, it was late and there was nothing open. So we, we, uh, we thought maybe a a little drink before bed would be a good idea. So uh, off we went and had a look in the minibar and there were lots of interesting drinks with names that we didn't recognize. So we tried them. Um, but they, they, they quickly ran out. So we thought, well, maybe Roger has some in his room as well. So <laughs> off we went and we tried those as well. Um, and when I got back to my room, uh, perhaps, perhaps a little worse for wear, uh, late at night, I found a card hanging on the door of my room. It was a breakfast ordering card. And I was at that moment rather peckish. And I thought, scrambled eggs. And I thought, oh, scrambled eggs, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Scrambled eggs for breakfast, very nice. And then I saw poached eggs. I thought, oh, I love poached eggs. <laughs> I shall have some poached eggs too. And um, oh, croissants, yes, croissants, nice, with a bit of jam. And uh, maybe some cereal. Oh, fruit, juice, coffee, tea. It was all there. And, and, and off I went to bed, having put a few ticks on the, on the card. Um, Woke up in the morning, of course, and a man came in with this enormous silver salver and put it on my desk. <laughs> Pulled the lid off it with a sort of da-da flourish, and I looked, and there was every kind of egg on it and every kind of cereal on it. I said, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I went to close the door, and he said, oh, no, no. And then another man came in with another silver salver. <laughs> but unfortunately, because I had rather overindulged, I could only manage a black coffee. But the... the, but the <laughs> The point of this story is not about that. The point of the story is that I, I, I was actually there with no credit card. And my, my, my dear new friend, Roger, duly paid my checkout bill for me. And that's the kind of hospitality you receive as you travel around the organization. Um, OK, moving onwards. So um, 1998. 1998, Christmas. I, I do remember it was Boxing Day. In fact, I was, I was visiting my parents. And um, as one did, and one still does, I checked my email. And there was an email from Jonathan, because um, Jonathan actually, in those days, never took a day off. He certainly does now. And Jonathan said, I've got this really interesting idea which I think we might explore. I'm thinking of setting up an online language school. Would you be interested in that? And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Um, I went back to... International House Barcelona, and we met up, and I met up with Scott, uh, and, and the rest really is history with net languages. We started off, the three of us, Jonathan, CEO, or whatever the title was, Scott managing the writing team, and myself uh, managing the technical team. And what was great about the early days is that no writing had been done, so the tech team had nothing to do. So we used to sit around in the office and play networked games all day, every day, while the writers were furiously scribbling away in the room next to us. And of course, that all caught up with us uh, later when all the writing material came in. Um, some of you will be familiar with net languages. I think it's one of the big success stories of International House in, in modern years, certainly in terms of technology implementation. It's now being used by 
hundreds of thousands of students all the way around the world. Um, I also sat down to write my first book, and I, I, I did this again with the, well, a suggestion from my colleagues, but also with the support of my colleagues. Um, and I think writing a book is a very, very daunting experience if you've never done it before, and having that kind of support is a, is a truly, truly magical thing. And I would never have written a book had I not been in that kind of supported atmosphere. Some might say that would be a good thing, but there you go. Um, it was also during that time that I ran training sessions uh, at International House Barcelona. On my first course, I had two people who you may recognize, Russell Stannard and um, Nicky Hockley. I taught them everything they know, but do, of course. Uh, unfortunately, they've learned an awful lot since then, much more than I have. Um, so there I found myself pretty much spending all my days behind computers uh, and not really out and about. But the one thing that happened to me then was that I met Nikki again. Nikki joined the writing team um, of Net Languages. And at some point, we decided that we would leave. And I know you can't leave. No one ever leaves. But we, did, we, we decided we would branch out on our own and set up our own business. And that takes us up to 2000 and the years go quickly, the older you get. 2003. And that was the moment when, I suppose, my immediate relationship with International House uh, came to a close. Although it hasn't, of course, because I've spent many, many years uh, since then going to conferences and working with international health schools all array around the world. Um, it's been an incredible journey for me. I think uh, one of the great strengths of this organization is it knows how to adapt. Um, and it adapts with wisdom and with forethought. And it adapts well. Um, those 10 years since setting up my own company of WhizBuy, lots and lots of travel, lots of training, lots of work with Maureen, since then, uh, initially with Maureen. And can I just say, Maureen, make a backup. <laughs> Every time I see Maureen, I have to say that to her. At one point, I thought I might have it tattooed on her fingers. But, um, but uh, lots and lots of work still with the organization. I'm still very, very proud to be involved with it. Um, and there go those years whizzing by. And here we are in 2013, all here celebrating. 60 years, a fabulous anniversary, I think, and I'm really, really happy, proud, and privileged to be here. <laughs> Last week, I was in Malaysia uh, uh, training some people from the ministry for three days, and on the third day, one of the participants said to me, she said, Gavin, this digital blah, blah, blah you do, it's not healthy, you know. And she was right. <laughs> In a few short years, I've gone from that man to that man. But I wouldn't have missed a day of it. It's been a truly fabulous journey, and I've enjoyed sharing it with some of you. And I'd like to thank you all again for your time. Thank you. Gavin, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions that we'd like to ask? Any online questions? <laughs> Does anybody want to ask Gavin any questions? <laughs> well, you have a question. Who trained you? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, who trained me? Mm. Uh, you mean in the, uh, in the computing I mean, I mean, side? You did the teacher training course. The CTEFLA with Peter Moore. Oh, yes. And two other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm really at that no, wrong no, age. No, no, but that's usually the case. But uh, then we'll ask Peter Moore, who else? He <laughs> so I, rem we'll, I remember we'll Peter him. because yeah. um, I, I uh, because he, he was the one who suggested I go to yeah. Spain, but also because I, I, I met him about 10 years later when we were both plenary speakers at a conference in Colombia, and I spent about an hour sitting opposite yeah. him at dinner going, I know that man, I know that man. <laughs> So he's kind of stuck in my head. Yeah. And a, a jolly good trainer he was too. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very thank much, you very Gavin. Much. Um, we've... Uh, <laughs>
We've, uh, we've seen the future and it made us laugh. Thank you very much indeed.